guys, just know, if the girl of your dreams, the object of your desire has these unrealistically high expectations for themselves, just know that there are girls out there simping for serial killers. Max out your own stats, find your purpose, and just absorb women. Don't go chasing women because, guess what? They're crazy. They don't even know what they want. Kentucky woman Brittany Hislope, lovesick for Idaho killer Brian Koberger. This isn't the first time. This isn't going to be the last time. There are people on death row that you don't even know that continue to get hoes. That almost rhymed there for a second. Anyways, accused quadruple murderer Brian Koberger is a driving one woman crazy in love. Woo woo! Brittany Hislop insists he's the perfect man for her. My love interest is named Brian and is accused of murder. And I only wish to connect with him above anyone else. The 35-year-old Kentucky single mom of a 16-year-old son. Yo. Gushed in one of her many Facebook posts about Koberger. Whom she's never met or communicated with. They just have compatible star signs and the crystals and like the tarot cards that she read. And that's uh, just all points to Brian. One of the ways... To uh, one way to describe my feelings for him over the last week or so is kind of being lovesick. Aw, oh, it's so adorable. His lope being po oh, began posting publicly about her infatuation on January 4th, just five days after Koberger was arrested in the fatal November 4th, uh, 13th stabbings of four college students in Moscow, Idaho. His lope, who repeatedly points to her and Koberger's astro- you can't be serious, bro. I was just making that stuff up. But this is how nebulous and absolutely flaky most women are. Most, not all of them, just a vast majority of them. Okay. They both point to their, uh, she points to their astrological signs. Their signs, they're both Scorpios. Oh my God. I knew it. I knew it. Oh my God. But what's your rising and like your, you were born under the moon and, uh, and uh, birth charts as explaining why he could. Oh, be her her divine masculine counterpart or counterpart. Sorry, isn't just drawn to her former criminological or criminology PhD student for his smarts and quiet courtroom demeanor. There's just something about those bushy eyebrows and those piercing blue eyes that you just can't find anywhere. Like I understand, he's in decent shape. He used to be a chubby kid back in school, but now he's at least got a healthy BMI. And given the fact that it's about seventy to seventy-five percent of people are overweight in the United States, you might have found one. Ah, he's just gonna be tied up for the next forty to sixty hundred years, something like that. But you can continue to opine from afar when it shows the lovemaking scene between the men and the woman that are different or that are two different characters in the movie although it's not very explicit i want to be with my love interest brian in those ways she wrote bizarrely referring to a scene in a 1987 vampire film the lost boys of course man if i am to just drop a basic bitch checklist it would definitely be an infatuation for you yeah, films like the lost boys nightmare before christmas the notebook uh, fascination with astrology all we need is just well my love language is acts of service and he would he, he would kill for me i know that like there's a study there's a study out there i might just pull it up right now and reference it yeah here we go from uh psychology today the surprising link between narcissism and a belief in astrology a lack of critical thinking seems to play a role astrology is an ancient practice that remains popular in many places around the world including the united states very much so this is a very western centric id or idea sorry nearly one of one in three american adults believes in astrology uh, let's just go ahead and cut the cut the nonsense right there i don't I don't ever hear this type of jargon being spouted by men. The only person that I've ever heard uncritically, unironically bring up star signs is probably Patrick Bet David. That's about the only person. He's wildly successful, but that dude is an outlier. Everybody else, though, every other guy that's talking about star signs, it's it's in a mocking fashion, or they're just trying to get laid on a date. Now, the word astrology comes from the Greek Aston, meaning star. Astrology refers to the study of the movement, position, and other aspects of the stars and planets with the aim of obtaining knowledge about human lives and future events. Oh, yeah? How do the stars keep changing? 
position in the sky, I thought the world was flat. Why do people believe in astrology? There's no simple answer because they just want to abdicate responsibility and they just want to believe in fate for themselves instead of free will and independent thought. It's much easier to live your life like that because you're just on a path. I'm a strong, independent woman, but everything's been predetermined by when I escaped my mom's uterus. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? There's no simple answer. Answer. In general, people are drawn to astrological signs, explanations, and predictions during times of stress, confusion, and uncertainty, e.g. hot girl summer. For instance, during times of social and political upheaval, revolutions, pandemics, the government making everything the new big crisis, in, oh, or personal crisis, well, <laughs> serious illness, mental illness. What's that percentage of how many women are on SSRIs? No, oh, just interested, interested. Um, Tangent here, just a little tangent. Many turn to astrology as a way to cope or feel uh in or feel in control or at least predictable. Editing on the fly. As for other drivers of individual difference and in belief of astrology factors such as age, gender, education, spirituality, thinking style, attitude personality and cognitive ability could play a role. This brings us to a recent study uh, by Anderson and colleagues from Sweden, uh, published in March of 2022 in, the, in an issue of personality and individual differences, which suggests that the belief in astrology is associated with higher narcissism and lower intelligence. Oh, so you bitches, you bitches are self-absorbed and stupid. Aha, aha. Why higher narcissism? Because, or perhaps because a focus is on the self and one's Oh, one's a special place in the universe. Guess what? <laughs> Sorry to say, you ain't that special. Uh, appeals to narcissists. In addition, certain paranormal and superstitious beliefs, such as narcissist beliefs concerning their own supposed superior abilities. I'm psychic. Like, oh my god, I knew we'd be compatible just because there's star signs. You're a wind sign. You're a, you're a fire sign. Oh my god. May also make narcissists feel special and superior. Yeah, the same people that take those Myers-Briggs personality tests or for dudes it's like this plays out for the dudes on the other end it's like whenever they walk around and say oh i'm an alpha male no i'm a sigma male no dude you're just stupid get out of here so yeah if you want to read the rest of that and that's from psychology today it's not from some blog that's out there that's accredited it's got backup and stuff so we're not just talking out of our ass over here Koberger isn't the first jailbird Hislope uh, has pursued. Of course, man, she's looking for that special somebody. You know, she's just got a type, I suppose. Having previously pined for local convicted killer Cody Hall, 33, who fatally shot a 50-year-old man in Polsky County, Kentucky in 2017 before attacking his sister and another woman with a machete. She dreams about being that machete. I visited him, put money in his commissary account, wrote him letters, and I wanted to be a loyal, committed relationship with him. He reminisced in 2018 about Hall, who wound up blocking her from visit. Whoa, imagine being so clingy, somebody uh, spending a life in jail doesn't want to see you anymore. Holy. Uh, when I say I was in love with him, I mean I was completely and truly in love with him. When I saw you, I fell in love with you, and I smiled because I know I love you, bruh. But then you go to old uh, Chucky Manson underneath there. I'm sure somebody fell in love with uh, his mixtapes he was putting out before he decided to get all culty and stuff. In addition to her uh, daily uh, diartistic uh, uh, posting, Hislope claims to have sent letters to Coburger in a Latta County jail about her amorous intentions along with pictures of herself dolled up. Uh, with me being deprived of love and sex life for so long and only wanting or only waiting wanting one whatever with someone i truly want wholeheartedly with my feelings for brian i've already had to be true to myself and reaching out to him she's a single mom right wow feel bad for her kid what do you expect wrote in a cringy post last month no it's not the first one it won't be the last one I'm sure there's worse than that. Uh, Captain Shane Anderson of Latta County Sheriff's Office declined to confirm whether Koberger has received any mail from his not-so-secret admirer. And it's not like she's a complete train wreck, man. Like, other than, you know, the blanket statement, that, uh, more often than not, single mothers are recreational use only. I don't think they've... Uh, I don't think they've... S oh, no, they have said she's 35 years old. Like, she can go out there and she can get some play. Like, she's not terrible, Okay. She definitely has that latent crazy behind her, especially from those eyes. Because in the three pictures here, it's the exact same look and it's a little bit unsettling. And the fact she has different hair color in all three pictures, but it's not like she's a total train wreck. Koberger is currently facing four counts of first-degree murder for allegedly killing Kaylee Gonca uh, Gonsalves. 
Uh, Madison Mogan, Zana Carnoodle, and Ethan Chapin. He has yet to enter a plea, uh, but one of his lawyers previously said Koberger is easy to be exonerated and is due back in court June 26th. Yeah, he's waived his right, or right to a speedy trial, so it's going to be a hot minute before that one actually hits court, but it's going to be a big one when it gets there. But like I said at the beginning, okay, this goofy broad up here, not special. She's not unique, and the fact that she opines over serial killers it's not a unique phenomenon. It's a thing called hybristophilia. There's an actual reason why so many women are obsessed with Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, when all that stuff kicked off as well, Charles Manson. It really is just the, an, an extrapolation of that old axiom, women love a bad boy. This is just the most extreme example of it. If you've been watching all things Ted Bundy, like the new Netflix biopic, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, and the Ted Bundy tapes documentary, or docu-series, uh, this thought has probably crossed your mind. Why, why on earth were so many women obsessed with this clearly guilty serial killer? And yeah, just, you know, throwing Jeffrey Dahmer on that one. Even though he was, you know, very gay and killing a lot of gay guys. This article was released in 2019 and it's still, you know, just as appropriate as ever. Turns out brutally violent male criminals often have many female love interests and no, they're not women who were in relationships with them before the crimes came out and decided to stay faithful. Yeah, like even this trifling hussy out here, you know what, just you know, giving herself away to a bunch of other inmates before she ended up getting blocked, which is... <laughs> That's just so funny. Uh, hybristophilia is one of the countless paraphilias, or abnormal and or extreme sexual desires. If women's health was to write this today, they might get cancelled for that. Doesn't matter, love is love, you bigot. Basically, it's a sexual attraction to someone who has committed some sort of an outrageous and extraordinary crime, says Jeffrey Ian Ross, PhD criminologist and professor at the University of Baltimore. Think mass murderers, sexual murderers, and cult leaders and flick your bean appropriately, because guess what this only happens this only manifests for one sex like there's no dudes out there opining for any of those uh, bad girls in the joint now, there might be some dudes running game you know, on the days where some of these uh, inmates end up getting cleared out and it's like oh you need a lift somewhere or a place to stay for the night they might be running game like that but n nobody's going to the trial day after day after day like they were for bundy and manson nobody's waiting around sending love letters to kim potter while she's doing her stint upstate for shooting Dante right. No dudes are doing that. This is a specifically female thing. And that's why if a woman rejects you, well, kind of a play off an old Patriceism, Patrice O'Neill, the great Patrice O'Neill. He was using two girls, one cup at the time. If you don't know it, you don't know it. But if you do this, you know, this will be quite a blast from the past. Uh -huh. Heavy emphasis on blast. You girls want me to jump through hoops. These were the words of Patrice O'Neill way back in the day. You want me to jump through hoops just to get a crumb, just to get a sniff of cooch? But yet you've got some absolute dime pieces pooping in cups and throwing up on each other? And all you are is just some basic five that's out there? Give me a break. And you can use this exact same situation. Oh, wait. <laughs> You want me to pick you up, you want me to pay for dinner, you want me to cash up you $200 to get your hair and nails done, you want to babble over the entire dinner, and you won't even suck it in the car, and yet there's broads showing up to courtrooms for serial killers every single day, I don't think so. Hybristophilia, two girls, one cup, live in abundance. Hybristophilia is thought to have been behind Ted Bundy's courtroom groupies and his girlfriend turned wife, Carol Ann Boone. It's also been used to explain the frequent love letters written to killers like Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, Richard Ramirez, who even ended up marrying one of his admirers. Yeah, on the stand. He defended himself. I think he went, tried to use this elaborate strategy of getting married inside the courtroom in order to somehow skirt any of his charges. It's a wild situation. Anyways, uh, there haven't been any studies on the condition and the most of what's known is anecdotal. Yeah, you can just kind of see a pattern. And while it's not common within the general population, it's a regular occurrence for male prisoners. Male prisoners. And who's opining after them? Interesting. I can't tell you how often I see this happen, says Luis uh, Schlesch Schelschinger. Sure. Professor of Forensic Psychology at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. In nearly every penitentiary across the country, you'll find female employees like lawyers, therapists, guards getting involved with inmates. Oh, there was that one uh, about a year about a year ago who broke out that giant goof in Alabama, and then they ended up getting into this car accident and 
Indiana or something like that. She was an absolute train wreck, and that guy was a goliath of an individual. She died, and did he get uh, remanded into ca- or custody one more time? It was definitely in Alabama. Yeah, if you need another example, and another one, it's just, hey man, stuff happens all the time. Even Bundy was rumored to have started a relationship with one of his lawyers. So what could be so appealing uh, about a guy who's probably completely evil, dangerous, and also lives behind bars? A lot apparently, when uh, hybristophilia is technically a sexual attraction, what's behind it is not necessarily sexual in nature. Well, it kind of is. It's almost like dial a dick, because then you could just show up, schedule your conjugal visit, you can get your male attention that way, but then at the same time, you can also get the feeling, all the mystery that's in their head. You can stoke that. That by having somebody who has status, serial killers, high profile killers that are out there, you know, their names are in headlines. So you're attached to that in some form or fashion. This is just the darkest side. This is just reality, man. It's the same reason rappers get all the bitches, athletes, actors, everybody, everybody who has clout, they can get away with some wild stuff. So yeah, it's really not that serious if she turns you down, man, because these broads will do anything, anything for attention. Criminals can make the perfect boyfriend, in a way, says Schlesinger. These women know their boyfriends, uh, where their boyfriend is at all times, and they have only and they only have to share positive encounters with them. Weirdly, it's a controllable and safe relationship option. Yep, that's the dark side of female nature that they don't want to say publicly. They'll couch it in some flowery language on top of it. I just like to spend time with him. When I'm with him, I he's the only girl. I'm the only girl in the world for him about it most of these women only see these men for occasional visits in the prison during which the man is on his best behavior says ross if he's not and she may never come back again yeah and he also lives a life of danger that affords a certain level of perceived competency it's also a secure setting so you got the protection side completely down realistically just harnessing a different aspect, but the same process as they're also engaged at the same time with a one-night stand. He was hot, I was drunk, one thing led to another, and that's the process there with the one-night stand. It's like, well, he was hot, and he had a knife, one thing led to another, and that's the other side of it. And then also, ooh, if we're to just take a step back, because I highly doubt women's health is going to be talking about this, there are some sexual fantasies that women have in regards to certain types of domination why do you think 50 shades of gray is one of the best selling books in history and have these dark desires that they don't want to come forward and be forthright about but let's stop let's stop denying reality here folks there's also a feeling of being needed clearly these women provide criminal males with much needed attention and in turn they get a sense of purpose usually to help Oh, help them through a trial, says Schusser Women who pursue these relationships may also be interested in getting attention from family, friends, and the media themselves. Yeah, this is all attention-seeking behavior. Like, let's just stop this. You got somebody who has nothing better to do than opine after you? Normally, yeah, these are busted-looking women, okay? At best, that's going to be your at best that's out there. So instead of just getting the attention of the square out there on the street, the shift manager at Burger King, well, you could have somebody whose name's in the headlines. There's also a thrill that comes with interacting with individuals who are notorious. Hey, there you go, shout out. Uh, With some women may be drawn to these men from their apparent dominance or masculinity. See, the the womanese is very strong in this situation. I just told you the way it is. Some bitches like to be pinned down, tied up, and ravaged. Don't knock it till you try it. Not to mention many serial killers are master manipulators and can appear charming and enigmatic. Uh, For many of these women, interacting with criminals provides a distraction from what they find to be a boring life. Yeah, and to just harken back to the bad boy archetype, those are guys who you know, at a moment's notice, if things get a little squirrely, have the propensity to enact a mass amount of violence and disaster. Not all women will take it to this extreme, but there's always that latent threat, that latent danger that is appealing. Competency is very attractive in a man and desirable from the female perspective. It's unclear whether women who find themselves attracted to men like this believe them to be guilty and are actually attracted to the idea itself. 
yeah, I don't really think that matters all that much because there was absolutely no doubt that Dahmer and Bundy, yeah, they, they did those crimes. There's no doubt there whatsoever. Bundy, multiple interviews. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, absolutely nothing in doubt on that one. And it's also known if there are experiences that would predispose a woman to hybristophilia, just, you know, being born with a vagina. Uh, there may, uh, though many experts and authors on the subject have speculated that a history of abuse is likely. Yeah, sure, it's always somebody else, and it's just some man's fault at the end. But also, don't panic if you find yourself thinking Ted Bundy is kind of dreamy or not alone. Their whole message board's devoted to it. That does not automatically mean you have hybristophilia. No, you're just goofy. And there's also some other studies, and I'm not going to pull that one up, but women are not forthright and honest with what they find arousing they'll tell you what's attractive they'll tell you what's attractive about a man oh he's funny he likes puppy dogs he's a good man but they'll never give you what turns them on that's just uncouth even in today's sexually liberated society so you'll see stories like this for as long as there's going to be killers and as long as there's a media willing to turn a buck on anything that bleeds it will lead and then you'll end up with fours and fives whoring themselves out for attention so with all that said Thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.